Alright, back again, Luke here, and today what I wanted to do is show you the internals of that CDI 470 that I got from the Half Blind Gamer uh, recently here. If you've uh, seen my last video, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, up until now, I haven't had any experience with the CDI, and normally I wouldn't uh, just rip it down, but unfortunately this uh, CD tray unit here was having some problems. Every time you went to uh, turn the unit on and uh, eject it, it was making a horrible squealing sound, and it took me a little while to figure out where it was coming from. I thought maybe uh, at first it was the belt, but actually what it was coming from is this spindle here. And uh, if you have a CDI 470 this is, and uh, you have a squealing uh, noise coming from your drive, this may be the problem. What I kind of pinpointed it at is this um, brass shaft that's coming through the center here. Um, it was pretty much bone dry, and every time the uh, spindle would turn, it would just make a huge squealing sound. It just like, you know, sounds like burning tires on pavement. It's just like... Rrr, 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 rrr. But uh, after greasing it up, it works fine. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have anything a little bit lighter to fit down in there, uh, but hopefully over time this will heat up a little bit and keep this thing well lubricated. But that's working out all right. And while I was at it, I figured I'd uh, get in there and clean off the lens. It's really hard to see because it's uh, kind of trapped in the back there. And I also took the, the opportunity to grease up the shafts that were on the, the back here as well as the gear that turns the whole mechanism. And uh, that seems to be rip-roaring ready to go. Now, well, some other interesting parts of this uh, unit, as this being my first time taking a look at the inside here, I noticed that this thing was just jam-packed with these kind of screws. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, these are all Torx bit or hex bit screws, and they have both of them mixed in there um, throughout the whole board. The outer casing is held in by them. Every part of the circuit board is held in by them. Uh, even the tray is held in by them. And uh, the tray has a section on it that's about this deep. And unfortunately, I didn't have a tool that was thin and deep that could go into that uh, slot and take out the screw. Um, I had this this driver here, but unfortunately the uh, the outer casing is a little bit too thick. It wouldn't slide down in there. So I had to resort to taking a regular flathead screwdriver and... Uh, where is it? took a flathead screwdriver like this, got it down in there with a pair of vice grips and just, you know, cranked those things out. And it took a little while, but I think when I put this thing back together, I'm going to put in some Phillips screws, <laughs> which will be kind of interesting. I have Phillips screws in a Phillips CDI. Uh, add your pun anywhere. Um, but it'll be easier to take them out if anything else has to be checked or greased up or changed or anything like that. Um, here you have your your little power module that uh, snaps onto the back here and it's held in by like two screws. And another interesting part here is, if I can find it, this piece here. Now what this is, is you can probably read it right off the front there. This is a digital video cartridge and I'm assuming that this is used for like the full motion video or like the DVD section of it. I'm not quite sure exactly but it just snaps right in here and uh, I hear that sometimes these systems come without them and uh, it kind of restricts what you can do with the system or what you can play like as far as games go but it was kind of interesting. I took that out and kind of uh, used some compressed air, blew that out and uh, wiped it off so that should be all ready to go. And in here on the board, they have this board really well uh, laid out here. As you can see in white letters here, it says digital video. And uh, this whole section here that's outlined in white is the digital video section. Now they have this outline um, in many different parts here, and it outlines each section of it. It's kind of cool. Um, they have the analog video, which is running all the way around here. They have um, the, where is it? Uh, analog audio, which is around this square section here. It's just a kind of interesting setup. Um, some of these wires here are kind of hard to um, jiggle around here without ripping them out because they're all soldered into the front piece here. A lot of them use those uh, quick release um, spots like here, but uh, and this one does have it too, but they are just all entangled like in between plastic and uh, metal here, so you really got to be careful. 
Also, one other thing that I noticed when I went to take the uh, disk drive out is here is where the ribbon goes, and they don't give you much space to lift that up and to uh, slide that ribbon out. So this is something you really got to be careful of if you're thinking about cleaning your uh, disk drive and uh, kind of greasing those parts up. You're going to have to uh, disconnect this ribbon cable up here and just be really careful when you do it. Also, to get access uh, to that drive that I was showing you, um, this spindle unit here. Let's see if I can just lay this here. Hopefully it won't uh, crash or anything like that. But uh, in order to get access to this area underneath here, there's a small little panel that you just have to pop off. And that panel's just got a little clip on it. You can just slide a, a flathead screwdriver up underneath there and then just pull it right off. You don't have to remove the tray or anything like that. It'll, it'll just pop off. There's enough clearance in there to pop it out and uh, get a better look in here. Even if you wanted to remove the, uh, the belt and change that out too, this is uh, what you got to remove first. But there's all sorts of interesting stuff inside this thing. And um, I did hook it up and uh, I was able to get video on it. But sadly, much like my Mega Drive, I wasn't able to get any color out of it. Um, it fired up, played the sounds great. Um, you could see most of the picture. Unfortunately, the picture was a little bit off uh, because of the differences between the TV, the NTSC, and the PAL. But um, it was, I was pretty stoked. Uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is try and find a video converter or um, something like an AV converter that can convert PAL to NTSC and hook that up, something that's powered, so I can get this thing to play. Because I really, really want to give some of these games a shot, but uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to do that yet. Still got a little bit more work to do. I'm going to polish up the front plate here and then polish up the rest of the casing. And then, uh, yeah, I'll use a few of these Torx bit screws and I'll put those back in around the outside of the casing. But as far as the inside goes, I'm definitely going to use some Phillips head screws uh, to put those in. Because if I ever have to take this thing apart again, it's just going to be a, a little bit of a mess. But that's all I wanted to show you with this. Um, kind of show you a little bit of some problems that things, things might have. Um, it's just related to age of the machine, you know. A uh, well-oiled machine can last you a long time, so if you start to have a squealing problem here, this is what I found is, uh, well, was the problem uh, with the drive, is what I said right here, uh, just this pulley here. Um, if you can kind of add some grease or add some oil to that spindle, uh, you should be all set. Just make sure you don't get it on the belt there. And this thing should open up and close pretty, pretty, pretty good. But... Uh, yeah, so a little bit of that and a little bit of a look at the inside of what the CDI looks like, or at least the 470 series. And like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.